Hello, today I'm going to show you how I turned ethanol that I've purified in a previous video into a carcinogenic liquid called ethyl bromide. I need this for some metallorganic chemistry in an upcoming video that I will reveal once I have it ready. We are also going to deal with boiling flammable corrosive liquids, so this is going to be fun. The synthesis of ethyl bromide has been optimized to practically quantitative yield in no side products over more than 100 years ago. And I thought I was clever and could come up with a better synthesis. Also, maybe I didn't do my research properly. In order to make ethyl bromide, we need to react the ethanol with some form of hydrobromic acid. The byproduct form is water in an equilibrium reaction. So I figured it would be best to react the ethanol with anhydrous HBr gas. To make the HBr gas, I just wanted to react some 85% phosphoric acid with sodium bromide. To do this, I built this big apparatus, which was supposed to lead the HBr gas in some boiling ethanol. Needless to say, this totally failed because the phosphoric acid completely refused to react with the sodium bromide even at elevated temperatures. I tried to save the experiment by pouring the ethanol into the sodium bromide phosphoric acid mixture, but it also didn't react because the phosphoric acid is 11 orders of magnitude weaker than the hydrobromic acid. After having wasted so much time and effort, I did my research properly and consulted the papers released over 100 years ago. I then chose the paper which gave the biggest yield for the least amount of concentrated sulfuric acid and ethanol used to save myself some time. This paper actually used my original idea of letting anhydrous HBr react with ethanol just in a lot more elegant way by using only one flask. Luckily, most of the sodium bromide crystallized out from the phosphoric acid again that I could just reuse it and all of that didn't go to waste. So here's my successful ethyl bromide synthesis. Weighing this shows that we've got like more than the original mass of sodium bromide back which was 342 grams. But that obviously can't be true and it also isn't true because this is contaminated with lots of phosphoric acid water and maybe also sodium dihydrogen phosphate but it doesn't matter i won't bother purifying this because those impurities shouldn't really matter for making ethyl bromide so i'm just going to assume that this contains like 80 percent of our original sodium bromide because we've already made like a little bit of ethyl bromide which obviously used up some of the sodium bromide i'm just assuming this is like 270 grams of sodium bromide and the rest is just phosphoric acid. We are also going to need 122 grams of concentrated ethanol and we'll also need 266 grams of concentrated sulfuric acid. Here you can very nicely see the great density of sulfuric acid. This is 266 grams of sulfuric acid and 122 grams of ethanol. So this is twice as much weight of, more than twice as much weight of sulfuric acid, but less volume, which is quite fascinating. Oh my gosh, paper becomes quite hot when you wipe concentrated sulfuric acid with it. That scared me. I've got concentrated sulfuric acid on my hand. Fantastic. Now we need to mix all of the sulfuric acid and ethanol while keeping it cool. So we are not forming any diethyl ether, which would be an annoying side product. That's hard to separate out. For that we're going to start with pouring all of our 122 grams of ethanol in this one liter flask. We are going to start the stirring and then we'll cool down the ethanol by using some liquid air. You can also use the freezer or some ice cubes, but funny enough, liquid air is easier for me to get. Whoa. So let's just pour some in. Also, it looks cooler and is faster. This looks more like alchemy than real chemistry, but it doesn't matter. And now the ethanol is beginning to freeze. So we can now start adding our sulfuric acid. 
without having to worry too much about the formation of ether. This is now rapidly warming up again, so let's cool it down. Oh, this get warm really quickly. Alright, there we go. I guess I had just enough liquid air, which is amazing. And to this we're going to slowly have to add our sodium bromide containing salt mixture. I mean ideally this would be pure sodium bromides, but I've messed this up so can't always have what I want. Whoa! This is not looking like I expected. Why is this so red? Okay, it's not in the gas phase, so I think we're good. We are not making lots of bromine. Must be some sort of complex in solution. Let me just hope to God this doesn't end in a giant catastrophe. Oh, I know what's going on. It must be the sulfuric acid stuck up here in the neck of the flask. It's reacting with the sodium bromide and it's causing some of the discoloration and smoke. Down here in the solution it all seems fine. Okay, and now this is going to stand overnight, so it can hopefully slowly react and form ethyl bromide. I've set up the whole thing for simple distillation now, and because this is so volatile I've made sure that all the joints are tightly creased, and I've put a balloon at the end here and wrapped it around very tightly. There's some water in the receiving flask to keep the product from evaporating. Also, as you can see by the thermometer, it's very hot outside. So the temperature is barely below the boiling point of the ethyl bromide. So all these measures are probably very necessary to condense it properly. But I hope the tap cooling water should be colder, cold enough to do the job. Now let's set this on very low heat and just see what happens. Here's the reaction after like half an hour on almost the lowest heat setting. As you can see it's going along quite nicely. Here you can see the product condensing in the condenser. Ha ha. And here's how much we collected so far in this 250ml flask. I would guess that's like 30ml, maybe 40 Also the temperature of the thermometer also reads pretty much what we ex what we would expect for ethyl bromide plus min minus a couple degrees but that's okay the distillation is going along very nicely all of the sodium bromide has managed to dissolve into the liquid also we've collected like at least 100 milliliters of product already here's the product of the distillation the two phases of water and ethyl bromide separated nicely and now it's time to work up the screwed product. After making double sure that the stopcock is closed and that I have something underneath to catch everything in case of an accident, I will pour the entirety of this solution into the separatory funnel. I will then drain the lower layer back into the original flask. The water layer can safely be discarded. After having treated it with concentrated sodium hydroxide to remove any remaining ethyl bromide. I'll then pour the solution back into the separatory funnel and then carefully add some concentrated sulfuric acid to wash out any remaining trace of ether. And of course the solution immediately starts boiling, but I will. Lol. The vapor pressure is incredibly high. This needs to be swirled around carefully and not shaken up, otherwise we might form an emulsion and it would be a catastrophe, obviously. The lower sulfuric acid layer is then drained into the flask containing the wastewater. Being careful not to drain any acyl bromide as it will boil immediately. And then a concentrated solution of sodium bicarbonate is added to destroy any remaining acid. 
As you can see by the vigorous firming, this is quite effective. This time I'll test the solution with a pH strip. Oh, and yeah, we we'll definitely have to do that washing step again. And now the product needs to be dried. So first I'm going to add some brine solution. The final product will now get drained into a tart flask. So we can determine the yield. This also contains some anhydrous calcium chloride to really dry it. And I now will tightly close this to stop any more evaporation. And if we shake this up with the anhydrous calcium chloride it seems to clear up nicely. Let's not forget to write the formula on there. Let's see how some of the highly contaminated residues from the first run are able to burn. Jesus Christ. This smokes profusely. But the bromine seems to be a good flame retardant. I'll just add some concentrated sodium hydroxide so it will get destroyed overnight and now be done with it. So here's the final product of ethyl bromide. After having dried properly, the solution has now cleared up nicely. And this is about 167 grams, which corresponds to a yield of 58%, assuming my original assumption on the weight of sodium bromide are correct, but that could be totally off. You may have to take that yield with a grain of salt, the percent yield at least. I might do the synthesis again, but on a larger scale, but for now I think I have enough product to work with. We'll see. If I need more, I'll do it again on a bigger scale. And then it will probably work a lot better now that I have some experience. Okay, that's it for this video. I hope you all enjoyed. Thanks a lot for watching and until next time. Bye bye.